All right, so salam alaikum, marhaba, hello, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming on Memorial Day weekend Friday. I know it's a sacrifice. I'm seeing some people that I haven't seen in a while and that I love dearly. Thank you so much for coming for a very hopefully spiritual hour of uh, Zubran poetry, Zubran Khalil Zubran. I know almost everybody here, which tells me how lucky I am to have friends who will come from far and wide. So uh, I wanted to talk about Jibran a little bit at the invitation of the Marcas because I don't know how many of you heard this, but there is an upcoming movie that is based on Jibran's work. It's, uh, it's based on the book The Prophet, which has made Jibran mainstream almost and has revived Jibran to a new generation of people. Uh, who's heard of the movie The Prophet? It's an animated film. And it stars uh, Salman Hayek, who suddenly now is pronouncing the ha in Hayek. <laughs> you know, she's no longer Salman Hayek. She's like Salman Hayek and proud of her Lebanese origin. She was in Lebanon, and she went to Pshemri, which is the uh, village from where uh, Zubran was born. And she touched the Zubran statue, and it was very emotional for her. Uh, Lebanese media went crazy. Salman Hayek comes to Lebanon to promote her film. And uh, so they went to the public records and the mayor and they found that her grandfather was indeed a Hayek born in uh, the uh, village of Chevy and uh, left to go to Mexico but then ended up coming back and she actually has a Lebanese passport so suddenly she's revealing all this stuff. Now I guess it's good for her so she's promoting herself and the career but it's also very nice for the Arab world to be able to uh, show off Jibran through a mainstream actress like Salman Hayek. So uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Jibran. Wow, I love you guys. Uh, so I, I think to each one of you, Zubran means something different, right? And the poetry means something different. I'm going to tell you what it means to me. And uh, then I'm going to ask you to tell me, you know, what verse, maybe how you came across Zubran. Uh, at the end, I'd like it to be, I'd like to, to discuss what Zubran could do for us in these times of uh, trouble. So um, notice his name spelled K-A-H, not a typo, Frank. That's really how they spell it. Technically, it should be K-H-A-L-I-L, right, Eric? They lose, and they say Khalil, K-H-A-L-I-L. But as you know, with the best-selling book, The Prophet, they dis the people at the time decided that to pronounce Khalil, it would be easier to say Khalil than to say Khalil. So, Either way, there's no kha in English, and so that is not a typo for those people who think Khalil should be spelled K H. It usually is. So Khalil Zubran, as you know, was born in the village of Pshelli uh, in uh, Lebanon, and uh, he was known not only as a writer but also as a sculptor and as a uh, painter. He has amazing, amazing works of art. But today we're going to concentrate more on his writing. Uh, let me uh, tell you a little bit about the village of Chelli. This is where it's located in Lebanon. I mean, it's otherwise would have been just another village, perhaps, if nobody heard of it because of Jibran and the fact that Jibran was actually buried there. Uh, it now has a touristic value and a cultural value that it probably wouldn't have had uh, otherwise. So it's a charming town. Let me see here if I can show you a little bit the picture. Anyway, so uh, trust me, it's a charming town. <laughs> Very beautiful village nestled in the green. And uh, Jubran was born there, and uh, his father was um, a local um, person in the village. And basically, there was a big issue, and he was arrested for embezzlement, which left uh, Jubran fatherless, not because he died, but because he was in prison. And uh, the mother sort of uh, almost, she called herself widowed. She had uh, Jubran, his half-brother, and uh, two girls, so she decided to pack up and come to America. So she brought her 
kids. She came in as a single mom, and uh, she raised uh, Gibran and his sisters here in America. And even after her husband was eventually uh, released from jail, she never wanted to uh, go back to Lebanon or see him again. So Gibran had very much from day one the influence of a very uh, um, powerful mother or a very strong woman in his life, and I think we see that later in the kind of spiritual writings he said, the way he sees women, the way he approaches issues that uh, relate to gender as well. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. His name in Arabic is Ali Gibran, Khalil Gibran, right? So it's not Khalil Gibran, but it's too much to repeat Gibran twice. Right? We heard you the first time, so we just know that. But Arabs, we would, if you say Khalil Gibran, they go, you mean Gibran, Khalil Gibran. And that's how all his Arabic uh, writings are under the name of Gibran, Khalil Gibran. His English writings are under the uh, title um, Khalil Gibran. So these are some of his uh, writings in Arabic. For those who don't read Arabic, Al Arwah Al Mutamarrida, Rebellious Spirits, Al Ajniha Al Mutakassira, Broken Wings, Al Awasif, Al Bada'a Wa Tara'if, which was a collection of sayings, Ara'is Al Mulul, Nabda Min Fan Al Musiqa, Al Mawakib is the one we want to talk about because that is one of the, that is sort of the Arabicized version of uh, the Prophet, which then, of course, led to Nabi, the Prophet itself. Al-Majnoon, which I think, Abdullah, is that the one you're doing? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so Abdullah is using um, Khal Jibran, Khalil Jibran's Majnoon and uh, juxtaposing it with Nietzsche. So maybe he'll tell us a little bit about that at, uh, at the end. Um, so those are some of his uh, um, Arabic writings, but the Prophet, which is the best-selling book, was actually written in English while he was in America. So he was in uh, Boston and after New York, and uh, who knows about Mary Haskell? Right, so another woman came into his life who was much older and was a, a teacher. Her name was Mary Elizabeth Haskell, and she, all, she believed in him and let him, uh, and sort of she, she had some money, so she kind of let him uh, spend his time writing and drawing, and, and he, you know, it was there a relationship or not, I guess people always ask that, but I'm not sure it matters because uh, through their collaboration, the Prophet was born. And the Prophet, or an nabi in Arabic, initially when we see that, we think that she's, he's going to be talking about uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or about a certain Prophet. In fact, it's not. It's about any Prophet. It's very spiritual and it also encompasses Christianity and Islam. And, uh, many faiths together. So a Nabi is not necessarily Muhammad, though it doesn't exclude uh, Muhammad, for example. And so from uh, the, it's based on the story about a fictional village where uh, the Mustafa becomes a fictional uh, Nabi and, uh, uh, from a fictional village. And uh, then he's asked a lot of questions about life. And the answers to those questions are what make the, the, the work so powerful. So did everybody get a poem? I'm going to begin with which is part of the Mawakib and part of the Prophet. And the Habit of Shalbin All right, so I'll show you. Does anyone want to read it or should I read it? Mahadabi, Bandra. No one's looking up. So, we will sing it. That's the next part. Okay. Um, Alright, so, so let, let me just, at least for those people who don't speak Arabic, at least you can hear the line and the kafia, um, the, the, the syllables. <coughs> أعطني الناية وغني فالغنى سر القلوب وأنين الناية يبقى بعد أن يفنى الوجود أعطني الناية وغني فالغنى سر القلوب وأنين الناية يبقى بعد أن يفنى الوجود 
هل تخذت الغابة مثلي منزلا دون الكسور فتتبعت الصواقي وتسلقت الصخور هل تخذت الغابة مثلي منزلا دون الكسور فتتبعت الصواقي وتسلقت الصخور هل تحممت بعطر وتنشفت بنور وشربت الفجر خمرا في كؤوس من أثير Let me stop there and for those people who don't quite speak classical Arabic um, there is a, an English translation but for those who do this is where I want to involve you so let me begin with Ari over here <coughs> Ari, where is your nai? So Atini and Nai, Atini for Papa to give, so give me the Nai. How do we translate it? Can you show it for us? Yes, uh, yes. Okay. So Ari brought an actual Nai. How impressed are you, Zaha, from 1 to 10 right now? Yeah. How many other people would talk about the Nai and bring an actual Nai? Uh, and so the sound of the Nai is very haunting. Uh, in English, we call it the reed but often they call it what the flute or something. No, it's, it's a reed, right? And uh, the nai has a very haunting sound, a very almost painful sound. And so the idea is that this, long after the nai stops playing, you still hear the sound of the nai in your head. You can sort of get it out of your head. In fact, it stays with you and it stays from generation to generation and at, even after people pass, by, pass on there is still the sound of the night. And that's what this verse means. Um, so were you going to do a demo of the sound yeah. of the night? And when you're done, we'll stop for a second and we'll <coughs> keep hearing it in our heads. See if it works or not. Ari, Morkos. into your heart. How would you translate anin, Frank? You write parables and I, I, translate them sounds like... Sounds very primordial. Yeah. Primordial, like ancient, like as an ancient soul. It's yeah. probably one of the oldest instruments for me. And so, the, it, it, it sounded... Did you, did you kind of tear up, Kate? For no. no reason? <laughs> I, I, I kind of teared yeah. up. Like, yeah, don't you hear it? You kind of go, said. oh my god, it gets to that part of you. So, that's the whole idea about mm -hmm. give me the, the nag. Uh, but the poem itself, you can hear me, right, without this? Yeah. yeah. So the, the poem itself is all about going back to nature, going back to music, leaving fake things, and I think it's very, very appropriate today with everybody on their cell phones and, you know, and all that. So obviously this book was the second best-selling book of the 60s. It was embraced by the hippies. Out of all, you know, because of the spiritual message. But Ben Gibran is a Christian poet from Lebanon, but they saw it as a very spiritual uh, poet. Uh, in fact, I, before you leave, I'm going to give everybody a letter that uh, Gibran wrote to our Muslim brothers, and it's such a beautiful letter about, uh, it says, from a Christian poet to 
his Muslim brothers and, uh, and take that with you when you leave just to remember how Jibran brought the faiths together and really was about spirituality. So uh, let's go to the next uh, stanza there with هَلْ تَخَلْتَ الْغَابَ مِثْلِي مَنْزِلًا دُونَ الْقُصُورِ All right, Zaha al-Masri, show me from هَلْ تَخَلْتَ الْغَابَ مِثْلِي In Arabic, العادي أو بالإنجليزي هَلْ تَخَلْتَ الْغَابَ مِثْلِي مَنْزِلًا دُونَ الْقُصُورِ شو رأيك Zaha? شو عارف السلام إيه بس شو فهمتي من أعطيني كلمة آه as in castles. So she's talking about, or he's talking about uh, forsaking castles, right? And taking what instead as your abode or your home? Al Ghaba, which is forest. the forest, right? So have you, like me, taken the forest to be your home, forsaking palaces and castles? So it's about, you know, living back to nature, back in the forest. Anyone? Abdullah? This is supposed to involve everybody here. Right, Kate? We wanted uh, to discuss, not like me translate it, because otherwise I would just read the English translation. Right? Shukran. Yes, Shukran, Jacqueline. So when I hear when I hear this, because the nine was played by Shepherd, so he's he's at the, the, to me he put it in place because he's saying what the Dabata Sawaki, what the Dabata Sukhu. He went through the fall of the rivers, a little uh, um, uh, brooks, whatever you want to call it, right, right, and then right. the land rock. So for me, and and because the Shepherd, the young Shepherd, used to play the nine. It'll put me there. For me, like when I read it, I just think of a young man who's just playing the music and just enjoying the nature. Absolutely. And giving up the And tasks. celebrating the falah, the muzara, you know, the, 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 the person from the village who uh, makes his uh, living from agriculture, of course, go back, goes back to Bishari. So this is his ideal existence. He lived in America, he lived in Boston and New York. He was always dreaming of going back to Lebanon, and even though he passed away in uh, the USA, his body was actually moved to Lebanon, where he was eventually buried. And Mary Haskell, the American lady who helped him, actually bought the monastery there and turned it into what is today the Jobran Museum. She was an amazing uh, lady. So yes, it's about following the Tabata to follow. Uh, Sawaki are, Vera, you should help me here. This is the river. And the river has little things coming out. What do you call it? streams? So if you follow the streams of the river, and fasallakta sukur is to climb up the, the rocks. All things you do in nature. Um, and, and it's kind of coming from an older person talking to a younger person who, where the younger person has is so obsessed with material things and you know the inventions of the modern world and saying, have you, like me, ever thought of leaving it all and going back to the forest? Um, I love that one. هل تحممت not be صلون but natural. وتنشفت not with bed, bath, and beyond luxury towels, <laughs> but nur, you know. So for those who don't speak uh, Arabic, <laughs> did you bathe in Perfume. natural fragrance? Watanashafta <laughs> binur. Help me, Sir Ben. What's interesting is that he's saying that you know he's, he's drying up with light. Right, right. Dry right. 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 yourself right. off with light, right? So if you lived in the forest by the river, right, isn't that what you'd be doing? You'd be uh, bathing in the natural fragrance of the forest, and then you'd dry yourself up with natural light. Light. Think of that next time you're buying a towel, boy. Wouldn't you rather be in a forest where everything is is natural and, and doesn't cost a thing? And you drank the dawn. Tori, what is that? To drink. Al-Fajr is 
Dawn. Dawn. Like the, uh, uh, the dawn. <coughs> Khamran. Wow. As if it were wine. The Khamran, this N at the end, makes it like as if it were, right? So uh, you, you drink the dawn as if it were wine in cups or goblets of okay. athir. Ether. 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 Ether, which is a natural an substance, word, right? Which is an Arabic word that translated to English became ether. Oh, another word we get, we gave the, the, yeah. the English speakers, yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. Alcohol being another one. Alcohol, al jabir, and athir. But of course here it's being used as a natural substance. So, uh, so really imagine, well you don't have to imagine an old man, imagine me speaking to a younger person. And I would, who is very obsessed with you know modern technology and saying, hey, have you ever thought of bathing in natural fragrance of the forest and and drying yourself off with light and drinking the dawn as if it were wine in goblets made of ether? So a lot of, a lot of symbolism. Um, I'm going to skip to the last two lines in your handout. هَلْ جَلَسْتَ الْعَصْرَ مِثْلِي بَيْنَ جَفْنَاتِ الْعِنَبِ وَالْعَنَاطِيدُ تَدَلَّتْ كَثُرَيَّاتِ الْذَهَبِ So, what does that mean? Let's see. Uh, Emma, what is جَلَسْتَ? <coughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, very good. I knew you'd know that. So, did you sit? Al Asr is what time of day? After Yeah, the late afternoon. Uh, Mithli, like me. Baina Jafnat al Inab. Okay. Zaha, I know you know Inab. Great. Great. But what is Jafnat? Does anyone know? Uh, vines? The vines, Muntaza. You're a good Shazran translator, Zaha. Uh, so, have you sat among the grapevines, like me, at the Tarek Ben Rowenak? The Dambosser. Ah, the Ahlarsahla is a gentleman, Dayman. Ahlarsahla. Fadda, the Fadda, the Fikaras, the Mohani, the Bitcoin. Okay, so did you sit in the dusk, right? Dusk? Uh, when is dusk? Dusk in London. Ah, I need like a body loss. Okay. So in the late afternoon, like me, among the grapevines and the, the, the grape clusters hung down as if they were Thurayat Adhab. So, of course, in the 70s, when Fayruz took Atini Nayawarani, Give me the reed and sing instead, for in singing lies the secret of eternity. Um, you know, everybody went crazy. The melody was actually not by the Rahbani brothers, which we normally would have expected. It was by Najib Hankash, and it was uh, uh, the lyrics by Zubran. So to hear Fayruz singing Zubran is an experience. So if you speak Arabic, follow along here. If you have speak Arabic, feel free to do this. And if you speak no Arabic, follow the lyrics here. Even if you don't know what they mean, you'll hear her voice and you'll know why she's, or what she's saying. So shall we hear Fayruz, Atini Naya Waghani? I think no. Atini Naya Waghani. Atini Naya Waghani. Microphone. Now, Habibi. I mean, I, I know the song, but I wasn't aware that Jibran wrote the words till now. Hey, Shaykh Mahla. Sorry, and you see how nice that is when yeah. Jibran is actually becomes discovered through Fayruz. Yeah. <laughs> Used to be and that, that they... Fayruz would have been discovered through Jibran back in Jibran's heyday. But Jibran started, you know, disappearing with the year, with the 70s and 80s people started uh, forgetting who he was. So again, and I started today with the fact that Salma Hayek is releasing a film based yeah, on yeah, Jibran's yeah. The Prophet, and I'm using that opportunity to kind of just explain to people what Jibran means for so many people. Lebanese and, uh, right? Yes, so I, 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 Al Mahabba and the other one will do a like quick a peek of that, uh, Jacqueline, uh, especially where she talks about children and marriage. I think we need to include those very famous uh, lines. So, are we going to actually like relax and forget everything and listen to 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 Fayruz. 
if you need to check your phone messages, do it now before we start. It's like, like, like listening to Fabian singing Gibran and then like seeing someone on their phone is very, very hurtful. It's like this. Now, did did uh, did um, Fayruz eliminate the verse about uh, the singing being better than prayer to avoid controversy? Oh, I love your question. Yes. So because I mean, I, I wish I had time. And, uh, yeah. So let me address that. Yeah, let me answer you right away. So if you notice in the line in the two verses before the the end, so two up. Yeah. Are you there, Habib? Did the light all the strength in your hand? Hey. So, أعطني ناية وغني فالغنى خير الصلاة وأنين الناية بعد أن تفنى الحياة. Literally, that means give me the reed and sing instead, for singing is better than prayer. Now, that was very controversial. I think it still would be to say that singing is better than praying, but that's what Jubran wrote. To whom Jobran melody, spirituality, and poetry had a, a spiritual value. To him, that was a kind of praying. So he said that Khairu Salah. However, you notice that when Fayru sang it, she didn't put a salah, right? They changed the word uh, for her. So uh, maybe we'll hear it there and see what word she changed it to. Uh, uh, there is another way to interpret this. Salat comes from the old word of Sila, which means connection. So, oh, uh, like the Salat? Yeah. Like, uh, bonding experience. Yeah, I like to think maybe that would be a, a nice uh, solution. But then they w uh, there was so much controversy about Abdullah because nobody saw it the way. When I couldn't interested. I wish you'd been there to tell them. Because they actually took out a salah, right? And they did something else. We'll hear what it is. Um, and so people actually, I'm so glad you asked me the question, Habibi, because uh, people know the Fayu song more. So yeah. they forget that the original was a salah instead of like knowing the poem yeah. first. Uh, anyway, here, here we go. Let's go around here. If you're She did say a salah, and this was the old version. So okay. there is the the, the re-release version. Okay. But something else, did you notice something in the first stanza? Yes, he like said nobody dares so say Fayruz made, made a mistake. Fayruz yeah. made. I mean, I, I, I can't believe I'm about to say that. <laughs> I might do not tell people. Fayruz made a mistake once in her life. She uh, in the first verse, right? Yeah, yeah. She yeah. says. Uh, Right? But then in the second line, doesn't wouldn't make sense for Zubran to put al wujud and rhyme it with al wujud, right? So obviously it is uh, uh, it's a mistake by Fayruz. But I think most people say that, right? They go al wujud al wujud. It doesn't bother them. But frankly, it uh, it should be al khulud and al wujud. It should be juxtaposed, uh, as in the Zubran's poem. Okay, so that's al that's a part of the Prophet that uh, Fayus put to music and eternalized. Um, but some of the other parts of the book, the Prophet, that I think we shouldn't leave tonight without at least broaching, would be the part on children, and the part on love, and the part on marriage. Shukran. Shukran, Dora. Uh, okay, so I've done, I've made some uh, printouts. All right, I think, who can handle Al-Mahabba? Al-Mahabba la ta'ti illa la ta'ti. Love only gives of itself, right? Al-Mahabba la ta'khud illa min Love does not 
take except from itself. لا تملك المحبة شيئا ولا تريد أن أحد يملكها. Love does not own, possess anything, and it doesn't want anything or anyone to possess it. So think about some definitions of so-called love these days, from relationships to bigger ideas of love. The idea of controlling and owning, and you want to own love, and you want you know, love cannot be owned, and love will not be owned. You cannot own it, and it, you know, it's that kind of beautiful, unconditional uh, feeling. It's something you cannot own, but you can have. Um, and then the end of mahabba muktafiya bil mahabba because love is satisfied with love. So is it in that? It's sufficient. Made sufficient. Yeah. yeah, it's made whole with love. It's, it's, uh, it's sufficient with love. Mumtaz. So, um, who sang that part? Feirouz. Again, Feirouz. So I'm not going to play the whole thing for you, just 20 seconds of her saying, al mahabba You ready, British, to follow? Feirouz. I think I have it set to go right now. think about marriage? Should I embarrass you and say, what is marriage to you? <laughs> Alright, well, I'll tell you what marriage isn't to Zubra. <clears throat> marriage isn't becoming a carbon copy of your partner. It isn't losing yourself because you are with someone else. It is not about um, compromising your values or your heart for the sake of anything of anyone else. Um, so what is left? You know, it's, not, it's about togetherness. It's about living a, as a couple. It's about being there for each other, but not drinking from the same cup, which is kind of, like, at first it's jarring, right? You're, they're like, why doesn't he want, isn't he romantic for both of us to drink from the same cup? No, it's not romantic according to Jobran. You should each have your own cup. Now, you can do this like in weddings, right? You're not keeping some away here, right? Okay. Hey, <laughs> but don't drink from the same one. Have two different ones. So the idea is when you're in a relationship, when you're in a marriage, to him, marriage is two people. You have each have your own cup, but they come together, but don't make it one cup, right? You were born together, and together you shall be for forevermore. You shall be together when white wings of death scare your days. I, you shall be together even in the silent memory of God. But let there be spaces in your togetherness. Thank you. I'm going to stop you a little bit. That's the, that's the one line that's supposed to be very jarring, right? Suddenly it's like, let there be spaces in your togetherness. And, but go on. And let the wings of the heavens dance between you. Love one another, but make not a bond of love. Let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your souls. 
fill each other cups, uh, each other's cup, but drink not from one cup. Give one another of your bread, but eat not from the same loaf. Sing and dance together and rejoice, but let each other of you to be alone. Even is the strings of the lute are alone, though they quiver with the same music. Give your hearts, but not into each other's giving. Don't you love the visuals of the lute? Like, like together they they're produce a beautiful sound, but they're not touching, mm -hmm. right? All right. So let's move to children. Who has children? Ma salam is on. Khudi ma ek shayad ko eri mati bet masa. Allah ma ek. Uh, okay, children. Auladukum, your children. Mim badri al Arabi. Okay, shukran. So here's what we're gonna do. Sharbel is gonna read the. Oh, we did it in Arabi, thank you. Okay, you wanna read the Arabic? Yeah, please. Okay. Okay. She saved you, Sharbel. Lubna, Lubna will read the Arabic, and I'll read the English. So, so you see how it. Like what each line means. Your children are uh, sorry. Your children are not your children. They are the sons of daughter of life's longing for itself. Okay. What They come through you, but not from you, and through you they are with you, yet they belong not to you. Okay, so what do you think of that? Let me just call on somebody. I would love to know Tori. Tori, my, my, can I say my favorite student? No. Okay, Tori, who loves poetry. Like, is it jarring to hear like your children are not your children? And they are the children of life. It's initially disturbing, like what? My kids are my kids, you know, I, how you, how dare you tell me that my children are not my children? Yeah, I feel like it would be more jarring in like um, a more conservative time, like further in the past, but right now it feels kind of freeing, I think, is the way like a lot of young people feel now. Which is what, Tori? Like, what are people doing now in regards to their children that maybe they didn't do mm. before? I don't know about parents in regards to their children, but I feel like there's um, people feel at least in America less beholden to their family um, than they did before. I, at least in my family, my parents are very supportive of me going out and being independent, doing whatever I want. But I mean, because of that, of course, I want to give back to them when they're older. But I feel like that's not like a societal like necessity for people. Yeah. So I think she, uh, Tori's hitting the nail on the head because especially in Arab society, you know, it is not uncommon for a 35-year-old bachelor guy to be living with his parents. Here in America, it would be very weird if like a 40-year-old man was living with his mother and father. People would be like, well, why, you know? So the idea there is actually, you know, it's almost unheard, or it was almost unheard of for a guy to move out before marriage and go have his own place. And so that I, it could border on suffocating the kid, you know? Uh, it's because you're doing so much for the kid and not letting the kid go. And I guess in the long run, and that's my reading of Shukran, you're actually not doing the kid a big a favor if you do everything for them and then they set them forth into the world and you know, eventually they're gonna get there. Uh, yes? One verse from a lady who has three amazing yeah, sons. Thank you. you. One verse speaks to me, it says, Oh, I love that one. Love, because yeah, that's right. what they know, and that's what they've been told. And it's like, if you let your child go, that's equivalent to turning your back on them. Yeah. And there's that kind of thing. So this was, you know, this a lot of people didn't, were, didn't like Jibran. He's radical. What do you mean? Not drink from the same mm -hmm. cup. We should drink from the same cup, sleep in the same bed, eat from the same loaf of bread. You know, that's together, that's love. You know, and, and I think that's very limiting. Allah. There's a saying, uh, 
Uh, explain in uh, uh, Asa, like the youngest of the, of the people is your servant. Wow, I love that though. You're talking about <laughs> 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 the need to have the power of youth. Abdullah, by the way, is writing a paper juxtaposing Nietzsche with Subran. Mm -hmm. He's got a wow. very interesting mm -hmm. topic. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, maybe after the talk, you want to talk with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sure, yeah. So, Abdullah Sarhan, remember that name, everybody, because he's going to be a great man. And read his paper on Nietzsche. <laughs> it's just for a class right now, but we will publish it. Because um, uh, I'm going to end with the movie, yeah. Nam trailer. Mm -hmm. Emma, what the nothing moved you today? You look very moved. Oh, sorry. You look, yeah, yeah. In fact, I think sometimes it's that look, that like, you know, de-stressed look that's worth a thousand kalimas. All right, so, I want to When I read this also, it feels like you read the Bible also, even though it has nothing to do with the Bible. Because there's some it does have to do I mean, with the sorry, Bible. Even though his his uh, writing doesn't directly refer to the Bible, but you can see that oh, when you, when you read it, you see like he read this verse or he read the other verse or not. Several verses combined together here. Right. In fact, there's quite a few books in Arabic published where where you know they're literally taking Bible verses and juxtaposing them with the Zubran idea, and it's like Jesus said this and. Uh, uh, you know, Zubran quoted his prophet as saying that, so it's very similar. But what I do love about Zubran, even in the 60s, and even though he was a proud Christian from a Christian family, from a Christian village, he really embraced Islam and he rejected the Ottoman uh, rule. Uh, and so he was claiming his Arabness uh, within um, sort of an Islamic uh, context as well. He didn't reject Islam, and I'm going to have everybody take one of these on their way out, which is a letter from Zubran to the Muslim brothers. Um, okay, so who made a movie about Zubran? Finally, uh, Sanmar Hayek decided to um, invest her own money and went to big uh, uh, Hollywood uh, um, producers and finally got the backing to do this. Um, so, the Lebanese are on <laughs> Mexican actress Selma Hayek says her new film, The Prophet, was a labor of love that helped her explore her relationship with her late Lebanese grandfather, who adored the book that inspired it. The animated film, which draws on the 1923 book, by Lebanese-born writer Khalil Gabran tells the story of Almitra, a headstrong girl who forms a friendship with imprisoned poet Mustafa. Hayek co-produced the film and does the voiceover for Almitra's mother, Camila. The story explores the themes of love and spirituality. While launching the film in Beirut, Hayek said, Through this book, I got to know my grandfather. Through this book, I got to have my grandfather teaching me about life. For me, this is a love letter to my heritage. And it's funny, in the report, you heard Mexican actress, Salma <laughs> Hayek. So she, she was in Cannes a few days ago, and uh, they unveiled the, the prophet in uh, Cannes. And so every time they would say, as a Mexican, and she would say, I'm here promoting, a, I'm Lebanese, I'm Arab. She actually used the word Arab. I'm, I'm Arab. I'm, my grandfather's from Lebanon, you know, and she was stressing that, like, I'm, I'm not here promoting, you know, when she was doing Frida or whatever, okay, stress, you know, but, uh, so, so she's been very, very, like, uh, verbal about saying, no, I'm Lebanese and, uh, and I come from that uh, lineage, so uh, the, the, they did an animation for her, or she decided to go the animation route, because she feels like the animation gives her a bigger space to fantasize about some of the uh, uh, verses in uh, Zubran's poetry. So it's limitless with animation, and uh, it's supposed to be a personal experience watching this film. So the way Ur will see it, it will be different than the way Dina Alami will see it, although they're watching the same movie. So it's like you're encouraged to actually see it the way you want to. Uh, and animation lends itself more towards, you know, different interpretations. Um, so let's see if 
مع توصل فعاليات مهرجان كام ما زالت إطلالة النجمة المكسيكية اللبنانية الأصل سلمى حايك أخيرا في هذا الحدث السينمائي تجذب وسائل الإعلام العالمية سلمى تحدثت إلى وكالة الأسوشيتد بريس عن إنتاجها لفيلم صور متحركة مقتبس عن كتاب النبي للأديب اللبناني جبران خليل جبران الذي ما زال قيد العمل وعرض جزء منه في خلال المهرجان واعتبرت حايك أن إرثها وجذورها اللبنانية لعبت دورا في اختيارها لهذا الفيلم. The book has sold more than 100 million copies around the world. So it's very inviting for everyone, different religions, different ages. But how do you make it into into a film? And so first of all, I thought animation was the perfect uh, way to do it because uh, visually you can. Do extraordinary things. ويشارك في إنجاز فيلم النبي تسعة مخرجين من العالم وكل مخرج ينجز فصلا من فصول الكتاب لتجمع لاحقا في فيلم واحد. Okay, so and by the way, there's nine different directors, each one directing one of the themes. So it's not directed by the same person. You'll have nine different uh, visions. Okay, so here is the trailer that was just released from the Prophet. The official trailer, and I guess it's coming to America soon. I think it's going to be the first animated feature. I'm going to go watch it the big screen. <coughs> Number seven. Seven. Why do you persist with these rebellious speeches? I have only spoken with love. Nothing less than a call to rebellion. What are you doing up there? I'm their prisoner. My crime? Poetry. Let me tell you a secret. I've flown away. Many times. We are spirits, free as the wind. In your longing for your greater self lies your goodness. Your children are not your children. And though they are with you, They belong not to you. <clears throat> What is it to work with love? Work is love made visible. which means give me the, the, the nai and sing me instead and forget about medicines and cures and illnesses for people are like lines that were written on a page not with ink but with water so they'll evaporate so shukran And uh, thank you so much for coming on a Friday before Memorial Day. Thanks a lot.
asked a young man, Amir, Marhaba Amir, Ihala Khabibi. So we know everybody here, and can we say thank you to Kate and the Marcus?